Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome for the first time ever on the show, professional skateboarder Sean Hale. What's up? What up? Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, for sure. Like I said before, I uh, said earlier, earlier we don't have a lot of uh, skaters on here, but whenever we do have them, it's always a treat. I, l I love having the skaters on here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we mentioned Hillary was on here before. Oh, yeah, Hillary. And you guys are from the same state, Missouri? Yeah. She actually grew up like uh, an hour away from where mm -hmm, I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, and then how did you... Are there a lot... Is there a lot of skating in Missouri? Um, yeah. I mean, there is mm -hmm, a lot. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. My my little town... I don't know. Yeah, my little town had like two skate parks, which was abnormal. Well, how, how far do I need to hold oh, this? Oh, this, yeah, this is fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. This is I was fine. wondering that the whole yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, what, and what town is that? Uh, Joplin, Missouri. Jop shout out to Joplin, Missouri. Yeah. yeah. And what's the demographic, like, race-wise? Is there a lot? Because you're, you're, you're half Asian as well, Yeah, right? I'm half yeah. Asian. Yeah, there yeah. weren't any Asians, really. It was just like mostly like white kids, I guess. Yeah. What was it like growing up being know. like um half Asian, Asian? And, yeah, most in a most Honestly, white I didn't community. even notice it. Yeah, I didn't notice any like anything really. It wasn't abnormal to me, you know. A at all. Mm -mm. Yeah. How did you get into skateboarding? My sister. My Your sister. My sister, well, my dad, my dad skated uh my dad's from California, and so yeah. he skated here, and uh, he always had, like, a banana board, you know? You yeah, know yeah, that? yeah, I remember those bananas. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I ha always had one of those sitting around the house, but I never really mm. skated on it. And, and then my sister wanted, a, a like, a regular board for Christmas one year, and then after she got that, I realized what it was. Because, it, like, growing up in a small town in the middle of the country, you don't yeah. see people skating down the street. At all, right? Uh -uh. And yeah. then Tony Hawk Pro Skater came out, and then I could tell skateboarding was more fun than yeah. i mean what i had known to that game <laughs> that game just brings up so many memories yeah uh, on the first playstation oh for sure putting it in uh i remember that i always choose chad musk <laughs> yeah <laughs> boom box yeah yeah <laughs> um now did that game kind of open your eye because there's you probably learn yeah. tricks like the well i didn't realize what you could do on a skateboard you know yeah like i had no idea i just thought it was something that you could roll across the living room that was my perspective because i had no clue and then uh and then it just your mind was blown. then i saw yeah i saw well my sister started bringing home like posters of guys doing tricks and i was like what Whoa, is that's that weird. like but what, out of magazines or just yeah like po yeah from magazines or skate shops or something mm -hmm, and she mm -hmm. put them on the walls and i was always like damn those are sick uh but uh i still didn't, didn't really know. know anything about it yeah. and then the game came out and then I saw that and I saw the skate videos in it. You remember all like the secret Yeah, yeah, the secret they tape? had the secret yeah. um, to unlock the, the secret, secret tape. Yeah, yeah the and secret then you get to tape. watch like skateboarders yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I remember that. That was the first time I even really knew. Do you remember that level? I think it was the main level. It was just like the warehouse. Yeah. And there was like oh, half sure. pipes in it and then like a uh, flat rail. Or lot yeah, 22 lot, or exactly. something like that. Yeah. yeah. I spent so many hours in there just. Um, Me too. Yeah messing around um i actually only had the, do you remember uh no one will probably remember this but the games that would come in the mail like it would be like a demo a demo disc oh yeah yeah the, it, the cd demo yeah. disc and then you would put it that's in. all i had it was like the de it would have like just one level of the thing so that's all i had was that one level i think i had the demo <laughs> too that's why i kept playing that yeah, same we're same. stuck in there right yep but you could do all the trick or you could like learn all the yeah. functions of the game yeah so you got Tony Hawk, and then 
when did you get your first legit board with grip tape and hey dad i want to do this um i guess probably shortly after i don't know for christmas i think I how got old a, were you i was probably 12 whenever i first got that maybe yeah. 13 god i'm an old man because i remember i was in college really damn when that was going on <laughs> i remember i i lived in the shady I thought we'd um, be like the same age oh no i'm, <laughs> I'm an old man <laughs> i'm old um I just remember I lived in this complex and my my apartment was like the drug party house. And I just remember it got to the point where people would just be going in and out and partying. And then I would just ignore them all. And I would just be play Tony. Yeah, huh? I would just be playing Tony That's sick. That's all the so time. Funny. And I just it, I was oblivious to all of deb- the debauchery that was happening in my apartment yeah <laughs> but uh let's go back so to you either good or bad um i guess both i have no <laughs> idea i just just if the homies whatever they did just don't go in my room <laughs> um so when you so you 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 got your board and what do you remember the first time you you stood on the board and um i remember the first time i was with somebody that knew how to ollie and I was like, Did that blow your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my mind too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't my friend. It was his brother. He's like, I'm going to go get my brother. He's going to show us that he can Ollie. And then from that point I was like obsessed. I was like, I have to be able to do that, you know? Yeah. And obviously you can't, can't do it right away. So, uh, did you, how did you learn? Just Cause now I mean, you're I, like mastery. <laughs> some of your stuff. I'm like, Oh, she, he back tilled that whole thing above the steep ass and Bateman. But how Thanks, did bro. you like learn? Like what's just, a, just, what was the progression? Like just being you? obsessed with it, I guess. And I, I was 13 whenever I started. So that's a little late, especially for a pro skater. Usually pro skater. What? Yeah. Back then that'd be unheard of. I know. I mean, early yeah. back then was high school. But yeah. you're saying 13 is... Th- I mean, for a professional skateboarder? Yeah. That's, I mean, not... You can't really be that much older than that to... Because it takes a while for you to, like, really develop it or yeah. whatever. But, and usually whenever you're a kid, yeah, you can you can pick up on everything so much quicker. So whenever you're, like, seven... I feel like a lot of pro skateboarders are like started whenever they're, like, seven or less. You know what? You're right. Because if you look at the Baker, like the new Baker kids, they're, they're a all lot young, younger. Like yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, it definitely yeah, that, helps. That's, that's really interesting to think of it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but it's all different out here. Wait, in California? Yeah, it's so different. Like, tell me the differences. Everybody's skating. Like, you see skateboarders all the time. You see skate parks and people doing tricks and stuff. Yeah. So whenever you're a little kid... I don't know. You got parents that skate all over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah. So California people are pretty spoiled, like kind of lucky. Oh yeah, for say. sure. Um, now when you in Missouri, when you because you probably learned your first tricks there, like so, how did you evolve and meet your crew of dudes and? Well, I guess, yeah. That's I just ended up. I had a group of friends in school, like middle school, mm-hmm. and then I started skating and my group of friends just completely changed to pretty much just the skateboarders because that's all we cared about yeah like pretty no girls pretty quickly no not really i mean <laughs> yeah that dude i was later. like yeah well i'm half asian i mean yeah. we're probably all small in high school or well, middle I school i didn't get any action in high school. <laughs> i didn't lose my virginity until college like damn sophomore junior college yeah that's cool though yeah uh, I, had, I had a prom yeah. night okay oh good for you but i didn't go to prom Oh, so, but it was prom night? It was prom night, yeah. Who's the lucky girl? Uh, her name was Cassie. Okay, good. Shout out to she, Cassie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, if she watches. Um, so, y- you kicked it with your core group of s- skater homies, and you probably got better that way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess I, they, kids, there weren't kids that were super good, like mm-hmm. a bunch, like there are here. So, I just none of us really knew how to skate yeah the guys that i first started skating with so we just dicked around and then uh luckily a skate park had just been built in my town right after because of tony hawk pro skater like was it indoor yeah oh those are cool Mm -hmm. were there self-made like wooden prop it was like it was all metal Um, it was metal yeah 
It was called the Bridge. Oh, that's. It was tough. like a it was like a Christian skate park, and that was like their youth outreach. Oh, so they have Bible the studies, park. then mm-hmm. skate afterwards. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Excuse me. Were you you're good? Were you involved in church camps and all that? I was when I was when I was younger, but mm-hmm. not anymore. You kind of not anymore. Mm-mm. Yeah. So that was a breeding place just for progression. Then went to yeah. that park. Mm-hmm. And that because it was a church, it probably kept me out of trouble too. Yeah, yeah, for so sure, cool. for sure. Because um, a lot of my like all all the kids I grew up with that were like in the same skating level or better than me, mm-hmm. it was just like drugs took them all out or not all of them, but not weed. Though. I mean, because a lot of skaters smoke yeah. weed and drink, but you're talking about drug just, drugs. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I just growing up in small towns, a lot of people start dealing drugs like yeah 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 earlier drugs and well what's what was the drug of choice in missouri there the, is, is it is there like a specific one definitely meth i was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say meth. <laughs> yeah. i was gonna just guess meth yeah <laughs> yeah and that, i think my hometown was actually the meth capital of yeah. the country or the world or something were at one in, point were kids in high hometown. school smoking meth <sighs> not that i knew of i knew people were doing coke or whatever but uh I don't know about meth in high school, but I did know a skater that got into meth from where Hillary's from in Springfield, Missouri. Mm-hmm. I knew a couple like that was, I think that happened to their skate crew. Like a, a lot of them got into meth. meth. Yeah. Now did they skateboard on meth? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know how that would work out. I mean, I know people could sm- uh, uh, skate on Probably meat. give you energy. <laughs> Some uh, might, I just, yeah. all I know is that it just like stopped them from skating. Yeah, Cause I would go, I'd, I'd go to Springfield and be like, "Where's where are these guys?" Like, and then they're... they just weren't. They were always there, and then they just kind of disappeared. Stopped. Yeah. When did you learn? So when did you start getting your ollie down? And when did you like learn the kickflip and all that? Dude, it took me like, you can kickflip, right? Yeah, it took me forever. <laughs> Ten months. <laughs> it dude. took me longer. Really? Yeah, it took me way longer. But I remember. When I landed it, it was like an outer body experience. Right. It was in Arizona because I had my group of homies there. That's sick. And they wouldn't let me leave the parking structure until I landed it. Yeah. Like, you got to try it again, bro. Uh, they're like, just stand over. Just, you're not committing. Just stand yeah. over it. Jump over it. And then Jump. I'm like, I just went, uh, and then I, it was really sketchy, you know? Yeah. It was like I rocketed it, but I like, it flipped somehow. And I'm like, uh. And I'm like, and they're like, they all lifted me up, like, <laughs> like I won, day. like scored the touchdown. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's yeah. a good feeling. I remember, it, dude. It took me ten months because I had no idea what I was doing, and my friends in my school didn't know how to kickflip either. Well, no one did because that was you're the best guy in the world if you do that. that yeah, was like a legendary tale in the town. Like oh, he knows how to kickflip, and it was like the lock, uh, Bigfoot or something. Yeah, it's like no way. Now, like every kid, tray flips. Oh, yeah, they switch. They do switch. But I remember I was just skating because there was a sidewalk in front of my house that I would just skate, like uh, the cracks. That's all I skated. Mm -hmm. And uh, this kid skated by. And so he came over and we, like, fucked around. And I immediately asked him, like, can you kickflip? Because I'd been trying so hard. Yeah. And he showed me a kickflip. And I tried one. And he was like, oh, dude, all you need to do is jump. And I was like, jump. (laughs) And I was like, what? Uh, never tried that. <laughs> I don't know how. Oh, because you were flipping it? I was flipping it, but I didn't know that you had to jump with your back foot, you know? Right, 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 right. So anyways, he told me that, and I think it took me three tries. Really? And then I did like 10 in a row, and then I was obsessed, you know? So you, you had it, Matt? You had it I down? I think I had worked on flipping it so hard. I was just like kicking my board out and flipping it. Yeah. That... uh. You goofy? Once, yeah. Yeah. So once I knew to jump with my back foot, like it's so obvious, but I didn't know. Then it was easy. So once you learned that, you were hooked, right? Yeah, for sure. And then how, because, you know, you've actually, you're pro now, you're professional now. How did it get to a point from that moment to like progr- learning all this other stuff? Um, So... I started skating with this Christian skate company in my hometown, and they would take me around the country. What's the so name of it? It was called Untitled Skateboards. Shout out to Untitled Skateboards. That's a positive thing that they <laughs> do for the, uh, yeah, for the community for sure. yeah. and the kids. Yeah, It was super cool. Um, but uh, Judd, he took me all around the country. Who's and Judd? Judd Heald. He's, like a, he's a pro skater. Okay. He owns that uh, Untitled Skateboards. Okay, that's what's up. Farm boy. Yeah. 
So that was like your first sponsor then, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, so he would take me around the country and we'd do demos. And uh, I guess it just helped me progress or, I don't know, continue doing yeah. skateboarding. Like, because I think a, a lot of the problem for, you know, a lot of kids want to skate professionally, but they don't get opportunities to do anything yeah. like outside of their, their area. Yeah. 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 So I guess... I was in the middle of nowhere and I had this opportunity like given to travel. To me, so yeah. And I was poor. So I, you grew up poor. Mm -hmm. Oh, so like traveling was not a thought to me. And then, so he was like, Oh, you want to go to Florida? I was like, fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting because especially with a sport or like, I wouldn't even say a sport, but just an activity or art form like skateboarding, it takes money if you're not sponsored. Right. Yeah. So how did you, how were you getting by before that? Like, cause it's expensive wheels, bearings, trucks, just buying stuff for my friends or like, actually, are you getting hand me down flow? Yeah, like, like here you go, homie, like mm -hmm. here's some trucks. Or I would like get 10 bucks and buy a board from somebody like an old board. That was pretty much it. But right, right, right. Also my, the skate park had contests and then you and like that. You'd, it would be like a beginner contest, but you get a skateboard. You get a board if you win. And so that's like, that's how I got my boards most of the time. Oh, and then I'd get crazy. a board for Christmas. Yeah. And then what about wheels and bearings and all the other stuff? Pretty much hand me down or get it for Christmas. Yeah. I'd get yeah. boards from my parents on Christmas. And then the rest of the year, I pretty much just try to find used stuff for my friends. Did you have your own method as far as like Q tipping, like your bearings or like, <laughs> like bearing cleaning? No, not really. And stuff like that. Did you? Like rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Like you would like with the Q-tip. I did like WD-40. but yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant. Like stuff like that. Yeah. That helps out. A little out, bit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always wondered that. It's like you're a scientist and you're like I mean, taking apart your stuff. And... I, I did, but yeah. I, I don't remember specifically having like a routine or anything. Right. So, um, so you're skating with this, um, this company. When did you get to a point where you started uh, migrating out here or like meeting other people in the industry and to where you're at now um i guess because i would travel with that company i started getting flow from other companies mm. and then uh i would just go to these contests in tampa florida mm. and i kind of the tampa am tampa am yeah. yeah and then eventually i started getting flow from other companies and then just Li great. linking with those people yeah. and then uh i don't know i guess man i was i lived in missouri until i was 22 damn yeah because yeah. actually it's, i mean it's kind of a crazy story i got married in missouri you got married yeah uh this, this story Are you still married? always comes up no no okay. i got divorced i was only married for like six months yeah. i almost had a baby damn. but she had a miscarriage oh, but um damn so then after that, then I left Missouri and I just drove to California, which yeah. I should have done whenever I was 18. Yeah, like yeah, 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 like yeah. That yeah. was my plan, but I don't know. It so how did, you, how did you end that relationship with... Uh... By leaving Joplin. Uh, <laughs> I just left and came just, here. Just... But no, we, it was, it was going to end. Like we, we knew that we were splitting up mm -hmm. because she, I mean, I was 22 and she was 20. High school sweetie? kind of it was like right after high school oh man yeah because your life would be completely different now if you had a kid and you're yeah in oh for sure you know yeah so i'm glad that didn't happen because <laughs> you're out here and you're on birdhouse now yeah things are doing good for you yeah so uh, i just ended up i left uh missouri and then i got to california i didn't even i didn't call anybody or like know where i was going whenever i left i didn't so tell you had anybody a duffel bag and i just yeah i put stuff in my car and i just drove straight out and then i called somebody when i was in arizona and was like hey uh i'm coming to california can i stay with you and he was like i'm out of town but you can you can crash in my room i was like okay skater skater dude yeah another skater yeah and so that helped out shout out to him who did, who mm -hmm. did offer that Zach. so you had a place to crash then what happens when you're out here? How do you make do? Just meeting up with people that I had met from the sponsors that I got from skating right, those contests. And they're out here. Yeah. And then, uh, so I would skate with them, like David Loy. I skated with him a lot because he I lived. Saw, I seen him at the laundromat up the street. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he stands <laughs> yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was just staring at him, and I go, that guy looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. That, that guy funny. rips. 
Yeah, yeah he does. He's, he's tall. He's tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Taller him. Guy. Yeah, so yeah. he was just a kid, and he lived right by me. So we just went and skated everywhere. And then I just, he always filmed with the Birdhouse Filmer. And then, so I would film with the Birdhouse Filmer. And mm-hmm. then it just ended up working out. Yeah. Um, when did you meet Willie? Uh, shortly, probably before I got on Birdhouse with David. Yeah. 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 Willie's a man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot He's of people great. don't know, know Willie. Not a lot of this other stuff would be happening. He's a Willie legend. Kind of laid down yeah. the foundation of it all. Oh, um, yeah. Even me being from Poway, San Diego, uh, that name was just legendary. Yeah. Like, wait, like, well, he, who is this He, kid? like, reigned the contest, right? Or, he was very consistent, yeah. Yeah, he just land everything. He land everything, yeah. Or, more specifically, not fall. Because I don't think I've ever yeah. seen Willie fall. Fall. I think you're right. I think he won it with all the contests. <laughs> like, for most skateboarders, you fall, like, more than you don't fall. You're just used to falling all the time, but I never seen I never see Willie fall. Yeah, um, and he's still ripping, right? Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. I mean, yeah, Willie's workshop. Uh huh. Um, I remember. Um, I was just I I was just getting into it, and I had my board at Web Park, and this kid walked up to me, and he only came up because he thought I was Willie, <laughs> really? and then he goes, "Oh, you're not, I thought you were Willie," and then he just skated off. <laughs> that's funny i go oh okay yeah <laughs> but um yeah that's that's a you know i remember that first video the end and how iconic because it was like filmed like a movie yeah. and i'm like whoa like andrew's part and willie's part mm-hmm. and like it was like a movie and i'm like how weird is that you skate for that company now like it's like, great it's a trip like, yeah for sure so how do Not- you fully get on there um just from so I got asked to skate for them at a contest and it's so funny cause I wanted to skate for them. I had wanted to for years. Yeah. And, uh, when they asked me, I was skating for this New York company called five borough. Oh, wow. I've heard of that. Um, yeah, Steve Rodriguez. Okay. There you go. There you go. Um, but, uh, is Ricky on there? Ricky Iola? Um, no, that's, he was on something else. Sorry. I, was I don't, I don't, I should know that. I'm, Friday. I'm sorry. I, I, I might be. I, I don't. I, I, I don't remember. Um, I, I was just thinking East Coast. Yeah. I'm don't Friday. Know, yeah. I don't know much know about that. it. Yeah. But anyways, with Fibora, I pretty much knew that it wasn't really going to go anywhere. I was just getting like hooked up because Steve was the man. Mm-hmm. But uh, so then I got asked to ride for Birdhouse and it like took me a minute to decide. I don't, I don't even know why. But, how does uh, that work? Do you send them an email? Do you no, send them a tape? Like, how does that work? The, well, I was just skating at a contest and my, fr- it was just friends of friends, you know? Oh, and then yeah. I, I think he just tapped me on the shoulder and was like, Hey, do you want to skate for Birdhouse or something? Or maybe he, it might've been a phone call after. I can't really yeah. remember, but that's crazy. Like, it's crazy to, for me to think back about it and like be pretty hesitant. I think it took me like a week to decide. Yeah. But uh, it's funny. But um, anyways, so I started getting boards from them, and then one day I went into their office. Where is it in San Diego? In San Diego, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like in San Diego, or Vista. Right, 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 right. But um, yeah, I met Tony, which was a trip, like, because. Yeah, if you skate, everybody asks you if you know Tony. People who don't skate, you know no. Tony Hawk. Or <laughs> no. everybody they has know their, Tony Hawk. Is, yeah. yeah. Everybody has their Tony Hawk joke. Yeah. But. Well, cool. was he cool? Was it like meeting him? It was, it was a trip because he said my name whenever I met him. And I was just like, I don't know, tripped out about that. He was like, hey, Sean. I was like, oh, you know my name? What the fuck? Yeah, that's crazy. But I was just getting flow for a birdhouse at the time. It was like brand new, so I didn't how does that work? Like, what what what's in a flow package and stuff? Like, what do you what flow, do you get? Yeah. Uh, Explain so to people with, who are non skaters what that is. With uh, whenever you get sponsored by a company, the first thing they do is they flow you, mm-hmm. and that's uh, free product. They just right? give you free product, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah, like skate our stuff or put our stickers on your board or whatever. So and what then, does that entail? So it's like two boards a month, a board, some grip tape. Um. Honestly, I don't even know, like three boards Three a boards month, a month. Or it yeah. just depends because every company is different. There's mm-hmm. a lot of brands that might operate on a smaller budget or right, something. So right, they might right, just right, give right, you right. a board or three or mm-hmm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
so then once you're flow for a while it's kind of like it's kind of like a trial or whatever and then to turn am is actually super stressful difficult it's just you have to because that's whenever the company says like okay we're, we're putting fully money fully like investing in backing you, you and we're going to support you and hope that you continue your, your career or whatever yeah. you know? so it's a lot of pressure huh yeah for sure yeah it's just weird like what what kinds of pressures i mean just for the, the just, viewers and listeners like what kind uh, of added pressures are there well of course like how well you skate but also like social pressures like what do you get, mean social just, pressures um how you act in front of like yeah like how you get people? along with people especially on the team like oh, wow. that because it matters so much how well you get along with everybody if you don't get along with one particular person well that that could kill your career yeah person. maybe and then like whenever you're first skating with companies sometimes people are like like if you're flow sometimes people will like mess with you but like just just like uh toying around because you spend a lot of times going on road trips mm -hmm. and you're in a van with like eight dudes for so you, you gotta get hours. it's like a band being in a band yeah. you have to get along with your bandmates mm -hmm. and you like fuck around with each other or yeah. whatever and sometimes like you can't fuck around with somebody they get like pissed or something yeah, and yeah. then so it's, it brings like a bad vibe or something and i don't know there's it's, probably been a lot of careers that have been kind of fucked because of that for sure yeah yeah, yeah. So, but you got, obviously you got along with everyone, right? Yeah, I got along with yeah. everybody. And so, I mean, we, we all yeah. have our moments, but for well, the most you know, part, it was like chill. Yeah. Um, everyone doesn't get along at all times. Yeah. Uh, but, um, Especially like every mood. And you're in the, in van, the van with these fucking people. Across the country, 24 hours. You Pranks. Go, yeah. 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 Um, so when did you it solidify, like you're, you're, you're totally in, like. Um, well, okay, so. The first trip I ever did with Birdhouse was this Europe trip, and I remember it was right when I got on Flow, and I was told that I wasn't gonna be able to go, and uh, because I was just Flow. Mm -hmm. And then we did this little show, this like TV show for Field TV. I remember Field TV, yeah. Yeah, I forgot what. Ah, what's um, what's the show? I'm I'm spacing it right now. Uh, where they build ramps. Man, oh, I can't believe I can't remember. Yeah, Jeff King had a couple. Yeah, of Jeff those. King's show. Yeah, sorry, God, it's built it, I, to shred. It built, built to shred. shred. Built to shred. Um, but anyway, so I went. Tony asked me if I wanted to skate that. I think it was the day that I met him. I was like, Yeah, I'm down. Like it was at his house, and so I was like, Okay, that's cool. And uh, so we do that show, and it's it's like they come and built these ramps behind his house over his pool. Jeez. And his pool's like, yeah, it was crazy. I'm just thinking like, like a gnarly vert thing. Yeah, it was going like. Going into something. Yeah, it was like a 12 or 13 foot roll in oh, to give you speed. And then there was like a 12 foot wall that went over his pool. Yeah. So there was like a gap in between the water and the ramp. And you had to carve it a certain distance Otherwise, you would hit this Wall? hit this ledge like the size yeah. of this desk, this big rock ledge. So if you didn't uh, charge like all the way over it, or like get your body all the way over it, you would hit this this uh, the corner of this It'd rock be ledge. Fucked up. Yeah, it would like It'd I don't know mess you up. Yeah, so it was kind of sketchy. Nobody yeah. would, nobody really tried except Tony, and then uh, I got I got pressured <laughs> you into got it. Pressured, didn't yeah. You? Um. When did it hit you? Where didn't he ask you? Are you gonna try it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was standing on top of the rolling with him, and then um, he just looked at me. He's like, "Well, are you gonna do it?" I was like, "I'm. Yeah, I want to." And he's like, "Well, there's that was not like really movie, any space man. up That's here. like a movie. Yeah, it's like that moment of truth. Dude, it really was. Was the adrenaline pumping? Dude, I was sweating bullets. Like, oh, so. And then he, so he looked at me, and he was like, "Well, there's no space up here," and I was just like, "That was oh, even shit. more." And yeah, I was like, okay, well, I got to stop being a pussy because I think I was up there for like five minutes and like too scared to do it. And then, yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, he pressured me into it, and then it just ended up working. But I I got to see him do it, and like a lot of the other guys didn't really try, but you could see how Tony was trying it, like just full speed get his body over it, and so yeah. it, it just made it it made it easy. So what happened your first attempt? It just it just worked. Oh, I you made, made it, it over? over? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> good for you, man. Yeah, it was I mean, I was I was so nervous. 
It's yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's nowadays, like... nowadays I'd be like juiced. I don't know. It, looking back at it, I'm like, that thing looks fun, but yeah. But back then, at that you point, are... yeah. I so just when, didn't know. that's, that's interesting. You brought that up. When did like, cause uh, obviously you've always, you're always progressing. When did it get to a point when your mindset changed like that? Where you're like, Oh, I'll just try that. Probably like, your skating's gnarly. Like it's not like normal, like your skating's like you go for, you do like big stuff. And... <laughs> maybe it was probably like seven or six or seven years ago, or maybe five years ago. But <laughs> I feel like, so at that point I was skating for like 15 years or something, Yeah, yeah. maybe about that. And I feel like after you've been doing something for like 10 to 15 years, you mm. could. Yeah, yeah, my eye eye. was twitching. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> something with my eye, sorry. But I feel like. What, what did it look like? I was like. <laughs> <laughs> you're just <laughs> winking at me a bunch. <laughs> there's something, there's something in my eye. It's like, like, like a salt, like some poisonous stinging salt <laughs> drop it was like <laughs> sorry i know the camera caught it too yeah but that i mean they've seen me do crazy stuff on camera like i'll pick mine up. maybe i've eaten boogers i don't know i don't care <laughs> yeah no shame this format's like no anything goes we don't edit yeah this is just whatever you see you get sure yeah yeah uh, but uh yeah continue with your well, anyways uh, like after you've been doing something for 12 years mm -hmm, it just, just kind of clicks or mm -hmm. i don't know i'm not saying that it like everything clicks for me but like with skating i at least understand how to make my body do do things whereas there was a point where it was kind of like you're just going for it and you're flailing like trying to learn how to do something you have no idea and i feel like now it's kind of like you can i can see it and i don't know like mm -hmm. I, I mean it's exactly as you would so i guess growing up skating you see it, you think you can do it, but your body just Does doesn't it, respond. Yeah, I could totally get, relate to that, to. especially like backside tricks. Like back, mm -hmm. I can't, I still can't backside tail. I don't know, how to, I don't know how your body. It's. I think it's just something about. You know what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. My my brain won't allow my body to do it to yeah. do to to do that motion or something. It's weird, but There's it's a, interesting. I, have, you I still that. have some tricks that like I just can't do. I think it's like. Uh, I think it's your muscles, like muscle your, memory, like or even just little tiny muscles in your feet, and like yeah. the way you move uh, your shoulders, and like I feel like there's a big disconnect whenever you're first skating to getting your body to move how you want it to, and then to where if you've been skating for like 15 years, it just automatically does that. You're you're just Molded way more in way. control of like the tiny movements that yeah right right that that's interesting you. that's interesting a lot of people don't talk about that in depth about skateboarding so yeah. you, so what does that stem from your brain not allowing your body to do that kind of movement or i feel like your brain you, you just your mind blocks you from doing stuff whether it's like fear, fear yeah or also it's like the speed at which you can move your arms or your legs or whatever you know so so are you saying that reflex reflex is a big part of skateboarding like oh, yeah, like reaction sure. time mm -hmm. and yeah because after you skate oh, it's interesting yeah yeah you definitely learn a lot of uh i guess reflexes where you just naturally move a certain way so like now i guess now I can land a trick and it'd be super sketchy, but I'm just so used to the way it feels to like roll away that like I'll let myself be in that vulnerable just, yeah, situation and, like, and not kick it out or not, not like, yeah, not bail it because wow, that's interesting. you get used to it. Yeah. That's so interesting because like a lot of people just like, you see these tutorials and stuff like, um, like trick tips, but they don't talk about that aspect as far as, the psychology behind it yeah, and like allowing so. your brain to work through certain things. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the tricks that you're struggling? Cause you, I thought yeah. like for me, a switchback tail, it just does not work. If I'm trying to on a ledge, like I can't get a switchback tail to go into in lock in yeah. to the ledge, but I could do a switchback lip, but, it, or a switch back over crook, but I can't do a switchback tail. I don't know why I can't. I, I mean, I do know why. It's because my switch always sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, explain to the viewers and listeners what that is. They might not, because this could be alien jargon to Oh, them. yeah. An and ollie, so. you know, an ollie is jumping, and then mm -hmm. switches just 
doing it the opposite, the opposite. stance so, so you're goofy so that's a right re- then you would be doing try to do a regular stance mm-hmm. back tail yeah so slide. goofy normally my left foot is on the tail mm-hmm. and if i'm going switch it'll be my right foot that's on the tail onto the ledge that's mm-hmm. going onto the ledge right yeah like yeah. popping the yeah the foot that um, you pop with I don't know how to do any of it. Like as far as the the back (laughs) tails, I could do no slides, but I can't do any of the tail slide stuff. Could you do something where would it be easier to like pop it with like like a nollie and then go into it like that? To a back tail? Yeah. For you? No, I'm just saying in general for someone who can't get in. Yeah, I mean that could be easier. It's just I think it's just about repetition, like just how many tries, how many times you try it. Right, right, right. That's so interesting. Oh, g- give me another example. This is interesting to me as far as of tricks that yeah, I yeah, don't know how to that do. you're struggling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, that's it, pretty much. Oh, just that's I got all it. the rest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I don't know certain flip tricks. Just uh, my switch flips, they could be better, man. They uh, could be a lot better. I think it's just like I really like skating fakie. Yeah. And you know what it was is in my hometown, my homie DJ, DJ Fort, he was like, he was so good. Yeah. So good. And he was really good at Nolly. And uh, so Willie's good too. Willie. Oh, yeah. uh, Paulo Diaz. Shout out, yeah. Those dudes. Nolly, yeah. Nolly. Yeah. But because he was good at Nolly, I didn't want to do the same thing as him. So I just skated fakie. So everything I did was fakie. Everything he did was Nolly. Now, do people but he can do the fake stuff too? Because skaters, there, there's like a cool factor, right? Like the cool tricks. Like, what's like, do people look down on fakey stuff? No, I or don't like, think so. Do people look at fakey the same as they would at Nolly? I feel like it's a no, different stance. A lot of people, it seems like a lot of people think fakey can be more difficult or less, more rare, I guess, because a lot of people mm. will skate, do like Nolly tricks because mm-hmm. you're still going backwards the same direction. Yeah, the same direction. And I, that's more comfortable for some people. Right, right. What are some of your favorite fakie tricks that you like doing? I just like I like doing fakie back lips a lot. Do you know what that is? It's like yeah. a like front board. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I just I pictured that. Yeah, fakie. Um, so you're going that way, then you would go, boom, and then you get mm-hmm. on a lip slide. Yeah. It just feels it just feels really good to do. I could do that into a nose slide. Really? It looks like a back that's tail. It, see, that's the thing. It I never lo- really It looks that. like a back tail, but it's really not a back tail slide. It's like a switchback tail. It is, but it's fakey, so you could trick people like at the park or something. They might, th- it, you know, they might they might think it's a tail <laughs> slide, but it's really not a tail slide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what I'm saying, though, right? Uh-huh. You're going fakey, and then um, I just did it because I'm like, okay, well, I'll just look backwards, and then I'll just guess. Um, I kind of cheated. Like I always, someone told me at the skate park, like. Um, how do you know how to like uh, how far of a distance board wise you need from the ledge? Yeah. And they're like, well, just put up your board and measure it like the, the, the length of it. Hmm. Like, let's say your board's this long and the ledge is here. So you would probably be like right here. Really? Yeah. So that's what they told me. They're like, well, just measure the that's length of the board. Logical. And then so I'm like, oh, OK. So I've never really thought about cause, that. Because <laughs> I was afraid that I would overestimate that it. Makes it that's perfect for fakie front nose slides. Like that method for fakie front nose slide is great. Th- that's how I learned it, that's though, great. because he's like, just OK, don't just in your mind, just make sure you you're at that distance and then i'm like okay so just make sure i'm like like i you know i kind of measured it i didn't mean i didn't want to like look like a goofball <laughs> and, and like you know measure it in, in front of people at the park yeah. but i was like in my mind i'm like oh okay and then and then i tried it a couple of times i'm like and i didn't commit but i was like kind of like pat and i got it on there you and i like it. stepped off and i'm like okay well at least i know I'm not overestimating it, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I don't slide it too far cause I shove it out of it, you know, but oh, it's like, it. um, it felt good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I never, but. I mean, I don't think I've done that trick maybe in a game of skate or something, but you're saying a lip slide. So you fakie lip getting the whole board over there. Well, the back trucks, the back trucks, huh? It's a little that, more yeah, like, commitment. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you don't get your trucks over it, then you just pretty much go straight to your tailbone or your like back. 
where do you put your weight distribution when you do a trick? Like, I, I've, I've never, I can't do lip slides. You're really good at them. I've seen footage of your <laughs> lip slides. With a faggy back Yeah, lips. how did you learn those that trick? I learned it because my homie did nollie front boards, and I thought they were, I wanted to learn them so bad, and I just tried a faggy back lip because I didn't want to learn his trick. And then it just ended up being, like, my favorite trick. And then... But you put, you put your weight a lot towards the tail, and you're going backwards. Yeah. So... I don't know. Yeah. Because you have to pop it. You have to pop really hard, too. Yeah. You, you drop your right shoulder then that way? Yeah. Towards the ledge? Mm-hmm. And then you put all your weight on your back, like your back, your, your right foot? Yeah, on the tail. On the tail. Mm-hmm. Have you ever got lopsided where you go? F- oh, yeah, dude. That trick works yeah. you. If you don't pop high yeah, enough, you I just slam. Fear, yeah, that's a, I'm thinking. <laughs> 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 you, then you, like, you go, you... Boom, you pearl. You usually slam. I mean, I usually slam backwards on that trick. So yeah. you don't have your hands to, like, stop you from, from falling. Yeah. But you get so used to falling certain ways that, like, I just know how to, I know how to, like, roll whenever I hit yeah. on my back. Seems like you have no fear. Like, I watch your, your stuff. <laughs> this guy is just going for it. I just, I don't know. I've slammed yeah. a lot. What are your thoughts <laughs> on um, the state of, like, companies and, like, I always want to talk about this is like back then YouTube wasn't around. Yeah. But nowadays there's people with careers and they, they, YouTube, they yeah. film their own stuff, edit their own stuff, like revive yeah. for instance. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, like, uh, I mean, YouTube most, companies most, and stuff. Most skateboarders that have been skating for as long as I have don't really like that. Not that it's like that much different. Like I, I don't know. Like I respect like these guys. They're just having fun. And yeah. Build, and yeah. like that they can build a career out of it is crazy. And so. Well, cause props, like they monetize off their yeah, channel. Cr- and like stuff. that's awesome. But so you're but telling I me mean, there's a group I'm, that frowns upon that. Well, if you've been skating for a long time and you grew up watching skate videos and like looking up to these skateboarders and these brands, like that's my perception of skateboarding is kind of like, skate videos and skate videos were would With be like companies. really gnarly yeah you know? these yeah. guys are filming for like years, years yeah killing themselves to put out to show you five minutes of footage Just, to the music that they like or whatever yeah 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 and like you know it's a lot of work into that and so that's what i grew up looking at and so i loved that and then so youtube is quick you know like you just like these guys they just put it out real quick and it's not it's just not the same same thing to me, I guess. Yeah. Or to so, most to skateboarders that. Um, yeah, I've always wondered that, you know, because I I recreationally skate just for you know I go to the store and you know I, I it, you know it's a part of me. I I've always wondered that just from yeah from an outside because I'm not in the industry. I just do it for fun. I've and always I've, wondered what it's like to like grow up with the YouTube videos. And then, oh, and then go back and watch like mouse or something. And then you get into like skate videos. Yeah. And then do you, like, no offense, but like, do you, does it, is it weird? Like the YouTube guys, you like, I go think back that and, the younger generation of YouTubers don't see a difference. I think that, yeah. I'm more on your stance because I grew up in the 80s and 90s and I saw that yeah. happen. But I think these younger, younger, younger than you are like, no, that's just as legit as these other guys. Yeah. When, I think a lot of people will disagree because I it's it, like it's a, just, it guess it just it depends what skateboarding is to you maybe yeah so, so like are they legit are they as, my question is are they just as legitimate as let's say like a chocolate skateboard like girl or chocolate or baker or something like I have, like revive the way people like rev, the revive skate team opposed to the girl skate team or something what would the would there's a difference, right? There's a, di- I, there's a With difference, the, you right? know, uh, or is there? I don't know. I'm just there is. It up. But I mean, so with a regular I like skate both. I watch, team, I watch their videos. I like, yeah. I like Aaron Cairo. I, I, yeah. I watch his videos. I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen a a bunch of the mm-hmm. YouTube videos, but mm-hmm. um, I guess with a normal skate company, you spend ten years like just trying Building to up, huh? to like you got to street skate and film and kill yourself and Mm -hmm. like take a lot of risks and then if you pursue it as a career then you just kind of like hope that it goes somewhere but a lot of people 
get really really good and they're doing this gnarly stuff in the streets and then it doesn't turn into a career then and, what happens well you know sometimes people get better opportunities oh. or they just don't take the opportunities or you know like sometimes yeah. you just don't have them around but anyways, so what do you say the window's really short uh, with someone yeah i mean definitely you just yeah you get small opportunities and they're brief and they're kind of like a yes or no and it's kind of like you know if it takes you two months to decide that opportunity is done give me an example like a trip or a part or like what, what like what? well just somebody will ask you if you want to skate for some brand or you know and like got, yeah sometimes a lot of times if somebody asks you something like that it's like either it's everything you wanted or it's like something that you didn't consider and oh right so you so i think a lot even i know especially with me like sometimes in those moments i'm like well i don't know what to do cause yeah i have i mean i would have like loyalty with other brands or you know i'm other situations other people might be in like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i got a friend who uh, i don't even want to talk about it uh, i have a friend who just is in a situation that he could could like it kind of like hampers uh skateboarding for him and he it, the situation is just because he's doing good for somebody else but uh you know a lot of people are like have predicaments where skateboarding might not be the best opportunity or right. like the best way to go so when but it so kind of can make you like jaded or yeah and then what happened so when you're done with uh like one skate career are there other opportunities because i've seen people like go as like team manager like yeah, maybe a team manager sure. or a rep for this company mm -hmm. for a shoe company like so that exists that's within, pretty much the way i mean it, it goes it's down like, right I mean, I know when I was younger, I was like, yeah, I'll just skate. I didn't really think I was going to be a professional skateboarder, but I just knew I wanted to skate. For sure. So I was like, for whatever, sure. I'll skate for these brands. And then someday I'll probably sell their stuff to skate shops because mm -hmm, fuck mm -hmm. it, I love skateboarding, you know. Can you do something creatively, like artistically, like maybe graphics or stuff like that? Like yeah. skate design or as far as uh, the graphics you would put on boards? And stuff? Yeah. I mean, I guess it just melds whatever uh your like whatever you do in your personal right life right actually right. melds with what you do with skateboarding you heard of dan rogers yeah yeah because i i grew up uh w going to poway um he was one of the pros one of the first pros besides willie i'm like my friend rich sale was like yeah dan's starting to skate with us I'm yeah like, who's dan's that legend i yeah but that's the homie, and he would come to our he went to a couple of our wrestling practices oh really because he wrestled for i in iowa and he was, I forgot what company, maybe Blockhead. I don't know who he skated for. One of those companies. And him and Tom DeLong from Blink would uh, skate. Sick. They would all skate in a crew. Damn, really? That's so it would be Dan and Tom DeLong and my homie Rich Salo. Tom DeLong's and sick. He, dude, he could kickflip back then. Really? Yeah, he was sick, dude. Yeah, I remember the. Like, he was. He's a real skater. No, he skated yeah. for real. Yeah. People don't believe it. They're like, nah, he's that rock and roll. Like that happened after. He was a skater, dude, That's for real. Sick. Yeah, but uh, at our high school. I loved Blink One Eight Two. Oh, you do? Bef yeah. It yeah, was yeah. Like before I started skating, and then I just always loved Blink One Eight Two. You know, you know, because he like went to my high school, to right? That's sick. Everyone ignored when they performed at the local keggers. Really? No you, way. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, man. Like, people would be <laughs> like, like, you know, it'd be at some backyard party, and then, you know, and then people like, ah, it's Tom's fan. Not give a shit. Yeah, because yeah, they weren't on MTV yet. But then when I went to Arizona, my homies came to visit me, and they had all the CDs. The one with the cat on it. Yeah. You know, a couple other ones. Yeah, yeah. And what? I'm like, and yeah. they're like, dude, he's on MTV, bro. I go, what? And then, you know, I saw him on TV and then now, and then now he's a rock history, star. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, going back to Dan is, um, Dan, dude, he was gnarly back then. Yeah. But I know now he's still kind of working in the skate in industry, right? Oh, like, really? I don't really I, know. I think for America maybe oh, is, sick. uh, are doing some, I don't know if it's sales or whatever, but, uh, I know he's somewhat affiliated yeah. still in skateboarding. Is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess if you wanted to go that route you have like all these connections mm -hmm. you know you just tell somebody that you want to work here or whatever do you think he'd be a good guest on here if i get dan uh dude i have no idea but yeah <laughs>
I mean, would you want to see it? Yeah, Do you think people would want to see it? Uh, yeah, because he's he's bit of the old school, it. like yeah. you know what I mean. But he was a prominent Dude, no, Dan, skater from Dan's the nineties, man. A legend, like people, like look up to him. Mm-hmm. Um, Laban too. He's been on here. Uh, I want to get so I want to get like a trajectory of the newer skaters, older ones, and maybe in between. What do you, I mean? Do you think that'd be a good idea just to get like different generations? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, neck, neck face. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was dope. He was dope. Yeah, N- neck face. Um, I would like to get someone maybe from Baker as well, but yeah. I don't know how. You know how it is with skate. The you know people. Um, there, it's a lot of poly- Like I don't. I'm yeah. not. You know, I'm not in the industry or anything. I mean, but yeah, it's pretty chill. Yeah, what made you Just agree to get on the um to do this podcast? Uh, my my <laughs> friend, my homie and business partner, uh, loves your podcast and he well, actually, can i give him a shout out yeah jorge shout out jorge to jorge Hidalgo, yeah yeah he skates too uh he surfs he skates a little bit yeah, he's yeah, about yeah, to build yeah. a mini ramp in his yard though okay that's what's up yeah so thank you jorge for he bringing sean he definitely skates yeah, but yeah i haven't ever skated with him okay okay <laughs> okay so he's he's seen it and he goes hey you should get on yeah i don't i don't even know i don't even know how and then you hit me up and yeah I was down oh probably from norman yeah from norman for sure do you oh, know Norman? Yeah, dude, that's the homie. Yeah, Norman's the shit. Norman's shooter. gnarly. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's a beast. Yeah. I I just when he, he's got so much power. Dude. He could all be over pop, He could all be over this. Yeah. It's insane. And this is about almost 4 5 it's, feet. It's too high. <laughs> yeah. I knew something wasn't right with was up with him at North Hollywood Park. You know the lower the there's a lower area than there's uh yeah, the area. stage. The stage. Mm-hmm. He's he ollied from the low, the low ground point, up to the big stage point. Yeah. Just flat ground, boom! And I go, oh my god. <laughs> he's got insane pop. Yeah, he's getting tech too, dude. Yeah, I've been shout oh, out yeah. to Norman. Shout dude, out to yeah. Norman. Yeah. What up, Norman? So so Norman, uh, he reached out to you, or you reached out to him? Um, I didn't. No, uh, Jorge. I think he talked to him. And I didn't really know because, uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden I got a DM from y- you and I was like, did you talk, did Norman tell him that, I don't know. He, he, I didn't he really know. brought you up. He goes, hey, the, uh, he, he mentioned you. Yeah. He did DM me and I go, oh yeah, for sure. Because I think I was already, it was great timing because I'm always open for skateboarders yeah. to be on this podcast. I can't get enough. Usually w- once in a blue moon, I'll get a skater. Like I, we've only had a handful yeah. You know, and but because we've had a lot of comedians and I'm like, you know, yeah, I like yeah. comedians, but I want to like switch it up. I That's want fine. more musicians, more even like I we've never had a trap rapper. I would want a trap <laughs> rapper. I want more female musicians, female rappers, yeah. whatever. Broad um, spectrum. Yeah, just a broad spectrum. Although I, I, I'm i a big fan of the Nine Club. That's how I got... I listened to your whole interview. Really? That's yeah. why I already knew about the Tony Hawk yeah. story. I'm like, okay, I know about that. <laughs> okay, I know about that. That was cool. But then it brought... It was like serendipitous, I guess you would say, when Hillary was on here. Oh, yeah. And she goes, oh, yeah, and there's this guy named Sean. I go, Sean... I go, oh, he... Because I had already agreed, you had already committed to this. That's I go, funny. he's about to get on here in a few weeks. She goes, that oh. That is crazy. That's crazy. Dude, I, yeah, those things line up. It just all lined the time. up. Because she was like, oh, yeah, Sean, he was like, because I knew you worked at a skate park in the neighboring town. Yeah. I knew all that stuff. Yeah. I knew you're from Missouri. Yeah. I knew you skated That's for so Birdhouse. Funny. Yeah. Uh, damn it, I just lost my train of thought. No, it's okay. Uh, it was meant to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Ren was asking, as a I pro skater, does lifting weights and what kind of um, physical activities do you do outside of skateboarding to improve your skateboarding? There definitely, you know, if you're skating for Red Bull, I know that they encourage like weights and stuff. But Damn. if that must be a nice most, check, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's most what, skateboarders uh, yeah. don't. Red Bull, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, it would definitely help depending yeah. on right. what, but if you bulk up too much, like upper body, it definitely yeah. makes you less flexible and you can see it. I with think skating. with your body type is a perfect, 
you want to be skinnier, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm a yeah. skater. You don't want. For you know sure. what I'm saying? I'm sure there's a big bulkier fat dudes that could kick flip. Dude, I but remember. But you have the perfect, and not only that, I'm, is your leverage. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty tall. I always feel yeah, like yeah, I wish I was I, shorter. Why? Because I feel like that it's just better, like center of gravity or something. Like day, I just, one, day, day one song style. Yeah, day one's so <laughs> good. Oh my god. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Uh, no, you got no. You're you're good, man. You're good. <laughs> Um, so, okay, I think we're, man, that flew by. I love skaters because, boom, just, Too yeah. easy to talk. Um, oh, I got, I got something for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you got some uh, presents, huh? Yeah, this is actually from oh, Jorge. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I got He avocados. just brought me oranges. <laughs> thank you, Jorge. I love avocados. Got a bunch. Can, can he have it's two like, yeah, of them, too? Yeah, for sure. Thank you so no, much. I, uh, my business partner, he okay. has like 400 avocados on his, oh, that's what's on up. his property. I've, I'm a big fan of avocados. Thank you, Jorge. I have like 100 in my thank car. You. Um, now's the time. Thank you so much, Jorge. Uh, can we? I want to promote if you uh, a video part or like if you have a website, video part, sponsors you want to oh, shout okay. out, all that. Yeah, um, oh, Instagram. Dude, actually, I should bring up. I, yeah, please. I started a, a company. It's a... It's a therapy company. Okay. Um, it's called Avos. But okay. uh, it's so Is your website? You were asking me earlier about like what do you do, like how does skateboarding go after you're done skating? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, I guess with me right now, currently, uh, like all the injuries that you get from skateboarding. Yeah, we we didn't even get to send that. Send you to physical therapy and shit a lot. Yeah, so yeah. Knee. There's injuries. this. Yeah. Well, there's, I would always sprain my ankles Mm -hmm. and, uh, I would hurt my ankles and the physical therapist would tell me to stand on a tennis ball every day for 20 minutes under each foot to help reduce, I don't know, I guess inflammation. Yeah. Yeah. Get help, get the blood flowing into the like arch of your foot and Mm -hmm. stuff. Um, would you roll it around your foot around yeah. it okay but so i would try to like stand on a tennis ball every day for 20 minutes and it was hard to do that like it takes a lot of that's like 40 minutes or yeah. i guess 20 minutes if it's under each foot so i just started making shoes that had a tennis ball in it so Whoa. that i could walk around the house like a slide yeah but, yeah uh, yeah yeah eventually i just um i learned how to like 3d print and 3d model that's so i would just dope. make these at home yeah yeah and then so i don't know i just pursued that to kind of like see where it would go it's like the oddest thing it's like a it's like a slide mm-hmm. like what you're wearing right there yeah a slider. but i have i built a like a ball into the shoe like right here uh-huh and so it's meant you're just meant to wear it for like 10 or 20 minutes in mm-hmm, the morning mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it stretches out the arch of your foot that's dope like increases the blood flow. To yeah, help it. yeah. And then this is the thing you're working on right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, is there a, a website or a place yeah, where people uh, could check this out? Therapy.com. Can you spell it out uh, to the camera? A v o s t h e r a p y dot com. That's great. That's great. But that's my business partner. He's. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. So when did you? Uh, so definitely check that out. Yeah. Uh, what about um, a lot of your uh, skate part? parts uh you could check on youtube uh, uh, i guess if you just look up birdhouse and my name mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I guess are you guys the, working on a video now uh i'm filming right now mm-hmm. but for what exactly it's going to be i don't know yet mm-hmm. but uh we put out a video called beautiful mutants like That's what's uh, up. maybe like a year and a half ago so that was the last part i put out so you, okay you so definitely check, check out, out beautiful want. mutants yeah. yeah uh websites or oh your instagram it's Hale, H A L E. Just H A L E. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then is, are we missing something? Fa- Facebook? Uh, um, no, that's pretty okay. much it. Okay. Dude, that was sick, man. Thanks for coming, easy, man. No, yeah, easy. <laughs> uh, I want oh, to talk to you. Actually, yeah, yeah a, go ahead. Go I ahead. I got something else for you. Oh, what, what else? What I else? just I have a board that has a UFO on it. Oh, I'm down, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, so, I remember I'm in so, one of your podcasts, I'm you so talked into about... That. I'm so into that. I'm into reptilians, yeah. all that. I don't talk <laughs> about it right now because um, cause, uh, I, I just try to keep it general Yeah. because I don't want to sound like a crazy person. I know. Because my brother was going to... Um, I saw that Yeah, because my brother, my brother was going to... Um, that shit tell my mom that i was insane they're gonna <laughs> he said they're gonna check me into a, a mental hospital yeah so uh That's thank you funny. yeah i appreciate that it's just yeah fun. um i love i love i love sci-fi dude i know it's great um um thanks thanks for that that's really thoughtful yeah. um 
Yeah, but we'll talk afterwards. I have some more um, stories about the stuff I've been researching. Some secret stuff. Do you know? Do you think? Do you think that it'd be safe ground here too? Because I try to keep that outside of this platform sure. because you know although i talk about all kinds i of think stuff, it's pretty fun i mean a lot of people because i want to get more ufo people in the, their <laughs> that field funny. like you know david I, Bob Lazar. yeah <laughs> all that and but i'm just like afraid of like you know people like think, people think they might crazy. think i'm crazy dude for sure i know it's crazy how like uh it's like one side or the other but People take it's weird. People take it so seriously, or something that. Yeah, but no one really knows anything. I know you don't know shit. We don't know any. I mean, these are all theories. You don't know or anything. You not don't just know. theories, but it's just like, dude, like, you know, even reptilians. I know, like, I do believe in them, but I've never seen one. Yeah. You know, I maybe felt their energy, or uh, like in a dream, I've seen some crazy shit. Yeah. Like, you know, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, I just. You know what I always trip on is you said something was serendipitous earlier. Yeah. I just see, I just trip out on how much like communication between people ends up being so like, uh, you know, like you'll think about somebody you haven't thought about in like five years mm-hmm. and then they'll hit you up that day. Yeah. That happened to me the other day. My friend, I, just, I haven't talked to him in like 10 years. Just he hit me up. He's doing a crazy documentary on um, street dogs in India. This fool moved to India and just started studying street dogs and Whoa. like it was like like gang type shit like that one dog will rule this street and oh, he whoa. moved to india damn his friend came to visit Wolves. him hunter got pink eye like the first day damn so he, <laughs> dude it, he it was gnarly it was gnarly for him out there yeah like, gnarly like being a white dude in india yeah he was out there for years Damn. Shout out to Jesse. He just has a that documentary sounds, called Pariah. That sounds and so cool. I'm going to help him out. I want to do either a Zoom interview to, to help promote this. Uh, it's, a, it's this crazy documentary film on like these dogs in India, like these street dogs. Rad. That yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah. Like I mean, wolves. he, dude, he spent his facts. whole lot, like his savings. and. Damn, that's cool. Yeah, he's in New York right now, but he hit me up. He hit me up, like going back to what you said, like I was thinking about him. Serendipitous. Yeah, he just hit me up. And I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. How hmm. you doing? And we just caught up yesterday. That's cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I just think it's funny that a lot of people think just because we have people telling us this is how it all works, that it has to be that way, even though it's, it's interesting really to just me. a trial Either way, error, To me, it's just another game. angle on it. Yeah. So it's just interesting. I like to hear, I know this, don't listen to the news that you see just on Fox or CNN. It's crazy. You know, that's, I don't yeah. listen to that. I like to look outside of that mm-hmm. and figure out okay well what's this person it's saying just, I, th- I think in america you get so trusting about where you get all your information that yeah sometimes it like makes you not want to look outside of what you're being told because it's so easy just to turn on the it's tv it's just interesting to to like realize that things could be completely different and yeah. to never even give that a thought is kind of funny that's what i'm saying it's just yeah an interesting thing i think that Whatever, like where the herd's going, go the other way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like you know what I mean. All these people are tripping. Oh, wear glass. Wait. No, no. For sure. Yeah, like, that's dude, the. What if the shit don't even exist? I don't know. I mean, it could be a whole hoax. I don't. I, have, I don't know that. I have friends that trip out on what happens during big things, like what's going on right now. Dude, I don't really get into it. But I have one. Out. I had one homie who was telling me he's like, yeah, the government just tried to push all this, all this crazy stuff through Congress. I think it was about like a, uh, like. Um, personal information. I think it was about the government being able to just read your text messages or something like that. And like right whenever the coronavirus thing like blew up and we started quarantining, I remember somebody was like, dude, they just tried to pass this crazy oh, bill yeah. that was going to take away a lot of our privacy. Oh, yeah. Like right then. Because Not only no one that. was looking. Yeah. The, all the news were Oh, 5G. On I think there's other things going on too with the 5G yeah. and then like just like this universal vaccine i think there's a whole thing like to control it's i think it's, it's about control like it's worth it's just worth people considering yeah like, for sure i like that all. you said that yeah <laughs> um but i'm gonna be open to that now with zoom because when we start doing zoom maybe i can hit up some of like people in that field yeah. <laughs> and be like hey Somebody stevie Weeby show to, yeah <laughs> That'd be all cool. right That'd so be definitely check out sean hales um all of his skating um his, all of his shoes, video parts Otto's. What was that? Check out the shoes, Avos. Yeah, Avos. Get go go to the website, purchase some some Avos. I mean, Avos. if you have any foot pain, yeah. I mean, most people do. Yeah, definitely. Did, the, all I'm trying to do is inc- make it easier to to function. incorporate uh, like 
phys- at home physical therapy, you know, just make it really easy to help your body. There you go. Avo, can you say the website again? Avostherapy.com. O- A-V-O- oh, A-V- A-V- yeah. A-V-O-S. A-V-O-S. A-V-O-S dot com. Avos. Avos dot com. Therapy. <laughs> Avos therapy dot com. Yeah. <laughs> or you could do Avos shoes. Or Avos shoes. <laughs> Go to the website, purchase Avos therapy. You don't have to purchase, but it's just. Check it out. Yeah. Check it out. All right. With that being said, we do have a Patreon attached to the show. Patreon.com slash Stevie Weave. You, if you want to help support the uh, platform. The newest patrons this week are Keith T., Dr. Daystrom, and Ryan. Uh, I have a, a website. St- uh, if you go to www.stevieweebyshow.com, get, you, get yourself a shirt or a hoodie. Go to Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Uh, I have an EP uh, on my band camp, stevieweebybandcamp.com. Oh, to my pops is still out. Thanks for the support for people who've been buying it. Um, there's a vi- music video called Goodbye Balloon. Also on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Stevie Weeby. There's no Little Ray's World this week, but we do have a P.O. Box if you want to send stuff in. Send your stuff to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. Dude, that was sick. Thank you, buddy. Yeah.